डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई जय जीवाणी वेलकम यू एट अवर चैतन्य स्टूडियो ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी अहमदाबाद टूडे वी शिल बी टॉकिंग ऑन विक्टोरियन पीरियड और द विक्टोरियन एज मेजर राइटर्स एंड लिटररी वर्क्स व्हिच इज यूनिट नंबर 16 इन द लास्ट क्लास यू हैड लर्नड विक्टोरियन एज हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड एंड मेजर लिटररी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सो नाउ लेट्स बिगिन विद दैट इन दिस क्लास we will be talking on victorian poets and then we will shift to victorian writers victorian dramatists etc so which are the victorian poets that comes in your mind when you think of victorian poets one and the obvious is alfred lord tennyson browning's robert browning and elizabeth browning i'm sure you must be knowing that they were married then arnold known as matthew arnold then arthur hugh clough and of course you must be knowing about something about pre raphaelite poets which was a group we will be looking them one after the other so let's begin with our poet alfred Alfred Lord Tennyson he was born in 1809 and he died in 1892 he is considered as the chief representative of the victorian age in poetry though he was much pessimist he is very famous when it comes to victorian period he was born into an old lincolnshire family there were 12 children and he was the fourth of them in 1815 alfred lord tennyson with his two other brothers frederick and charles was sent to louth grammar school where he was unhappy he was much unhappy about the education that he was getting at this grammar school when it comes to grammar school i'm sure you would be able to connect it with shakespeare also so what happens then in 1815 he was sent to the school but now he decided to leave the school so after 5 years he decides to leave this school which one is louth grammar school and then in 1820 his home conditions were difficult but still his father managed to give him a proper white literary education which means tennyson had studied properly and he has gone to grammar school so it can be assumed that he had read many poets and authors of previous years like romantic poets and elizabethan poets or so writers and he was much influenced by them now in 1824 what happens the health of tennyson's father began to break down and he took 27 he went to trinity college which was in cambridge and there he became friends with arthur hallim when it comes to tennyson you must remember this name that is arthur hallim who was he he was the son of historian henry hallim and he became members both of them they became the members of apostles now what is this apostles it was an undergraduate club of earnest intellectual interest now one thing that you should remember that during his early college he was the member of a group literati group or say of intellectuals groups and the name of that group was apostles and there after he up uh, joined the cambridge he became much reputed because uh, 
Um, there is an example you can see that he won the Chancellor's Gold Medal uh, in 1829. In 1827, he joins the college. There, he joins the group Apostles and in, he receives the medal called Chancellor's Medal for his famous poem of Timbuktu. In 1830, the poems chiefly lyrical. It's a collection of poems, poems chiefly lyrical. It was published in 1830. In 1827, he goes to school. He goes to Cambridge. In 1829, he receives the Chan Chancellor's Gold Medal for the poem Timbuktu. In 1830, he publishes his first collection of poems known as Poems Chiefly Lyrical. Helen and other apostles at, that, at the same time in 1830 when he published his poems chiefly lyrical uh, at the same time with the other apostles the members of that group that was there with Helen they went to Spain to help in the unsuccessful revolution against Fredridanand VII and there Helen had become attached to Tennyson's sister Emily and later they might marry but here in 1830 he was forbidden by her father to correspond with her for a year let's see the next one in 1831 as i told you his father died and it brought a long misery for him because his father was in much debt when he died in 1831 and then he because of this depression because of this too much of misery he leaves the Cambridge and uh, he did not even take the degree over there he did not even graduate hard. though he was educated he did not have any formal degree and his grandfather helped him in financial condition and he made enough arrangements so that family can get out of this debt in the same year, Helen published a eulogistic article on poems, chiefly lyrical, who his friend Arthur Helen. What did he do? In 1831, he published the article on poems, chiefly lyrical. When did that poem came? It came in 1830, as you can see. In 1831, there is an article by Arthur Helen which is known as article on poems chiefly lyrical and where was it published it was published in english men's magazine in 1830 the poems the collection of poems get published and in 1831 the english men's magazine in which his friend arthur helen wrote an article on the poem chiefly lyrical now, in 1832, he went to Somersby as the accepted suitor of Emily. Now, you must be knowing who was Emily. Emily was sister of Arthur Helen, as you know. But for a year, as you remember, we had talked in the last slide that he was forbidden by his father. Now, in 1832, he was a accepted suitor of Hamily. And in 1832, Tennyson published another volume of his poems dated 1833 with the same name, Poems Chiefly Lyrical. And which are the poems that were there? The Lotus Eaters, The Palace of Art, The Lady of Shalott. These three poems are much famous. It can be asked in your UGC net exams that when was the poem the lotus etudes were published or the palace of art or the lady of Charlotte? it was published in 1832 in his second collection the volume of second volume of chiefly lyrical poems among them was a satirical epigram on the critic christopher north he was his it was a pseudonym for Wilson and who had attached the poem and who had attached on the poem chiefly 
lyrical in the magazine Blackwood's magazine. In English, in Englishman's magazine, the Arthur Hallam had written an article for Chiefly Lyrical, who was his friend in 1832, Christopher North had criticized this poet Alfred Lord Tennyson in the uh, magazine called Blackwood's Magazine. I hope this much is clear. Now, in 1833, what happens? He had gone to a visit to Vienna when in September 1833 and there the tragedy happens. What happens? His friend Arthur Helen Joyce. They were too much connected. Both of them after joining Cambridge, Arthur Arthur Helen and Alfred Lord Tennyson were too connected. Even they had family relations now because Emily was a great suitor for Alfred Lord Tennyson who was in love with her. Now Helen died, shocked and went into a depression. There the poems in the same period or in the same year in 1833, his poem, the significant poem, the two voices of which the original title was Thoughts of a Suicide comes. Even after getting into this depression, he did not stop writing. And there, the poems like Ulysses, much famous poem when it comes to Alfred Lord Tennyson, Saint Simon Stylites, Stylites Saint Simon Stylites, or the first draft of Morte da Arthur, he started writing. This is a much important period for you because Ulysses was published, which is much, much famous today. To this period also belong to some of the poems that became a constitutional part of the memoriam, his famous poem in memoriam. This in memoriam is very significant uh, collection of poems which came in 1850. We will be talking about that. In short, this in memoriam is nothing but the celebration of Helen's death and lyrics later walked into mod. In 1833, his friend died. At that time, he wrote poems like the two voices, Ulysses, Saint Simon, Saint uh, Simon Stylites, or the first draft of Morte the Arthur. And later, this comes under the In Memoriam, which is going to come in the next period. Now, in 1836, in May 1836, his, bro his brother Charles got married to. Louisa Selwood. His, in 1836, his brother Charles got married to Louisa Selwood. Why do we really need to learn about his brother who is getting married to, to somebody? Because the sister of Louisa Selwood was none other than our Emily. And the wedding of Alfred fell in love with her sister Emily. For some years, the lovers corresponded, but Emily's father disapproved of Tennyson's because of his uh, certain addictions like addictions to pot, addiction to tobacco, and even not just these addictions, but Arthur Lord Tennyson was far ahead of his time. He was much liberal, and because of this liberal religious views that he had, his father, Emily's father, did not say yes. He disapproved of their love. In, in 1840, he forbade the correspondence. He was corresponding to Emily, but in 1814, he stopped talking to, he stopped corresponding to Emily. We need to know this background to learn the poems that he has really written. Meanwhile, 
the Tennyson had left the Salisbury and he had settled down near London. He was a wanderer. He was just wandering near the areas of London. He has left his place, Salisbury. Uh, now, in 1842, Tennyson published the poems in two volumes. In 1842, he published the very first one, his chiefly lyrical. He also published the second volume of it. Of it. Now, in 1842, comes the new collection in two volumes. One containing the revised selection from the volumes of 1830 and 1832. Consider this is 10 years after. In 1832, the second volume of Chief Lyrical had come. To remember, in 1830, the very first one comes. In 1832, he again, you know, like comes with a second volume of Chief Lyrical, which was again revised and, uh, you know, like published uh, the volume in 1842 which is one volume, but he had not written just one, but published two volumes. So, the second volume, the second volume had new, uh, new poems, which are there, Morte the Arthur. The first draft was, the first draft of Morte the Arthur had come in 1833, but now in the 18, 1842, the complete poem Morte the Arthur is published. With this, we have the two voices. You remember the two voices which was published? Then, Locusley Hall and the Vision of Scene was also published in 1842. Few other poems that reveal a strange nevit, such as The Maquen, Lady, or Clara, or Vere, the Vere. It's a French, you know, like a kind of a French version of the poem. Then the Lord of Ballet. These are the poems that were that revealed the strange kind of feeling. So even till the period, till the time, till 1842, he was not much well received by his audience. Audience means Victorian audience. He was not so well received. He was not so well read he was much criticized one of the examples we have discussed earlier but he receives the grant of robert peel now who was robert peel he was the prime minister and he uh, granted pension of 200 dollars which actually saved his financial life he had at least now some financial support so that he could sit and write now, in 1847, what happens? He publishes his first long poem. Which one is his first long poem? It is The Princess. And it is also known as, it's a singular anti-feminist anti fantasy. Yeah. So, in Nate, if it is asked that which is the longest poem that uh, uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson has written or which one is the anti-feminist fantasia? It's the princess. And if you remember, if you want to remember the date, we got uh, freedom in 1947 in India and just before 100 years, in 1847, the princess was published. The year 1850. It's a turning point for Alfred Lord Tennyson. So many changes, so many celebrations that came in Alfred Lord Tennyson's life. It resumed his correspondence with Emily Selwood. And their engagement was renewed and it was followed by marriage. But that is not that significant. He got married. That is one of the celebrations that he had. He had. But... Other than that, Edward Moxon, he offered to publish the elegies on Helen. Who was Helen? Arthur Helen, which was his friend. And you remember we had talked about In Memoriam. It's a f At first, it was published anonymously. Anonymously means his name was not included. In Memorian in 1850, it was published and it was a great success during his period. Today, it is a great success. 
but even in in his even his audience during his time had well received it was the very first well received collection of elegies in memoriam was it was uh, with uh, it was uh, you know like success it was a great success with both by reviewers as well as by the public the very first he a uh, very well received by reviewers it was initially if you look at his initial poems during his period he was criticized and it brought friendship of queen victoria and a poet and then he was also appointed as a poet laureate so many things that came in 1850 that's why it is considered as a turning period a great turning point of time for victorian poetry as well as specifically for alfred lord tennyson because his first time his elegies was offered to be published by edward moxon it was published with a great success and it brought a friendship with queen victoria and he was also appointed as poet laureate in 18 50 now let's see what happens after 1850 but before that why do you think that he was well received he was very much celebrated when it comes to in memoriam a h h which is nobody other than his friend helen so it was a vast poem of 131 sections how many sections are there It is of varying length. It's too much. It's it's a very long, long poem divided into one thirty one sections with a prologue and an epilogue. Prologue is written before a poem. Epilogue is written after a poem. It was inspired by the grief at the ultimately death of his friend Helen Arthur Helen. it touches intellectual issues of the victorian age here he represents the intellectual issues of victorian age he tries to come to terms with his sense of loss what is loss if you want to really feel that that uh, what loss is you must read his poem in memoriam and uh, what does this poem do it tries to search for the meaning of life and that what is life what is death what is the sense of loss and belief in immortality with the emerging theories of evolution you remember darwin's uh, a collection darwin's a uh, book was published which which questioned the theory of evolution and modern geology it shows the development over 3 years of poet's acceptance and uh, understanding of his friends that what does it do it shows the development over 3 years you remember when did he start writing after his friend died for this 3 years he talked uh, he looked at the, that how did he really uh, 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 how did he accept death of his parent how difficult it was to uh, uh, to to uh, remember this loss and uh, to understand uh, his friend's death and at the end uh, in this epilogue he talks about a happy uh, marriage song on the occasion of the wedding of his sister cecilia then in now he is enough succeed and now each of the collection that we would be learning is up uh, up uh, is well received by the audience in, in 1852 uh, he accepted the position as a national poet it was confirmed by his uh, this is what critics says that he was considered as a national poet by 1852 with his odd on the death of the duke of wellington and in 1855 his famous poem on the charge of the light bridge uh, light a uh, brigade at a uh, uh, balkalwa it was published in mot and other poems in 1855 
the poem mod comes which is very much important for us when we talk about mod mod itself is a strange and turbulent monodrama provoked uh, you uh, need to uh, really look into the word monodrama because the it is the very first time that we see uh, lord tennyson's monodrama it pro it provoked a storm uh, of many of the poets admirers were shocked uh, by uh, the morbidity hysteria and uh, belio uh, belio of the hero and let's now shift to 1859 so this is nothing but his uh, uh, from 1859 his uh, uh, long project on uh, of king arthur starts in 1859 his poem idylls of the kings uh, got, gets published what is this poem about it's a series of 12 connected poems it's it is surveying the legend of king arthur from his falling in love with uh, gwyni or uh, winu to the ultimate ruin of his uh, kingdom the introduction of the evil to uh, camelot because of the adulterous love of lancelot this lancelot is none other than our shakespeare's lancelot the character and queen or uh, queenever and on the consequent fading of the hope at that had at the first influenced the round table fellowship idylls of the king had an immediate success this poem was as i told you after 1850 most of his collections most of his poems were much famous it was a very great success that he had and tennyson who lot publicity had now acquired a sometimes embarrassing public fame in 1860 he publishes the poem the enoch arden it's a volume of perhaps represents the peak of his popularity which poem the enoch artin in 1869 the new arderian italies were published in the holy grail and other poems it is dated 1870 uh, 1870 this poems were well received though some readers were beginning to show discomfort at the victorial moral issues as i told you he was enough liberal even his father in law of uh, the father of emily hat uh, did not accept the proposal of tennyson because he was much liberal so this moral uh, you know like a uh, victorian period had started questioning uh, the lord and a uh, lord tennyson's issues and had introduced to his source material from thomas mallory nuff in 1874 in 1874 his first poetic drama queen mary in 1874 his first poetic drama was published named queen mary though it appeared in 1875 it is an abridged version was produced at the lyceum in 1876 in 1876 herald and beckett two uh, poems or two collections of poems were uh, published but still you know like beckett was uh, published much later in 18 or uh, 84 it was published but it came in 1876 the promise of man is the village tragedy by alfred lord tennyson and it provokes it provokes a failure at the globe in november 1882 it is his only prose work it can be asked in your ugc net that which is the only prose work that is written by alfred lord tennyson it is the promise of man and what does it do what does uh, this uh, the promise of may uh, his village tragedy deal with it deals with tennyson's growing despondency and resentment at the religious moral and political tendencies of the age as i told you he was much liberal in a sense of in a sense of victorian moral values so again if you see the another significant example it's november 1881 when he publishes the poem despair 
So these are the kinds of poems that he wrote late to his success of 1850, where we see that he is there is a resentment of the religious, moral, and political tendencies. When we talk about 1885, he comes up with his new work, The Ancient Sage. And it is a more positive indication of the Tennyson's letter ideas, letter works. It appears and published in Tiresias and other poems. So now again, after 1885, uh, there is enough positive significant indication in his works. If you see, after 1850, after he gets the success, he uh, uh, has uh, certain issues uh, which, you know, okay, like the Victorian uh, moral audience had the issues with it. But he again, you know, okay, after uh, pessimistic uh, views that he had, it changes in 1885 with the ancient sage, where there is a more positive indication in his of poems like Tiresias. It's a collection of poems in which the ancient sage was uh, published. His intimations of a life and beyond this life is discussed in this poems. Let's see. In 1874, as we uh, discussed, the Queen Mary was published. Now, after 10 years of Queen Mary, the play, the prose work that had come in 1884, he accepted the peerage of Alfred Lord Tennyson. Till that he was known as Alfred Tennyson only. In 1884 we can say that Alfred Tennyson became Alfred Lord Tennyson. And again after two years in 1886 he publishes a new work, a new volume of work Loxley Hall 60 years after. Loxley Hall 60 years after. And this poem, uh, this uh, volume consists mainly of imprecations against modern decadence and liberalism and a uh, uh, retraction of the earlier poem's belief. In 1889, Tennyson brought the famous short poem crossing the bar during the crossing uh, crossing the bar uh, comes in 1889 and when did he write he was passing through he was crossing uh, through the isle of uh, white so uh, it, when you uh, when it is asked that which a uh, poem which short poem by Tennyson uh, deals with the crossing of his a uh, crossing to the isle of white it is crossing the Bahar. And then comes his Timitur and other poems in 1889, which consist to Mary Boyle, The Progress of Spring, and Merlin and Gleam. Merlin and Gleam is an allegory by Tennyson, whereas The Progress of Spring is a lyric poem by Tennyson. You know, 1892, you know, as he died, in 1892, his a play, the last play comes, that is, Forest Tours and in, in Forest Tours it, it was produced in New York City and even though he was uh, very you know like ill uh, he was very sick in 1892 uh, even this period he uh, his last volume the death of Oyenon uh, death of Oyenon uh, Akbar's dream and other poems he had uh, you know like worked on it he had than the proofreading of it uh, while he was on his bed. Now, uh, let's discuss his image and influence. So, he is an embodiment of his age, that is, Victorian age. He was a poet laureate and official poetic spokesman of the reign of the Victoria. Queen Victoria considered him the perfect poem, a perfect poet of love and loss. He has talked about love, he has talked about laws and Queen Victoria considered him as the perfect poet of love and laws. He uh, also inspired the Pre-Raphaelites which we will be talking about and the great poet T.S. Eliot called him the poet of metric and melancholia.
as he was the pessimistic poet he wrote he wrote too much about the sadness so that melancholy uh, he uh, t s eliot that why called him poet of metric and melancholy yeah. before we conclude uh, uh, let's discuss the subject of tennyson's poetry so it can be divided you know like in uh, two or three parts like his early poems which we had talked about were lyric and they were legendary narratives and his later poems are of ethical interest what is ethic it has ethical interest in them tennyson was no deep thinker he was content to the mirror the feelings and aspirations of the time he is reflection he is the mirror of the feelings of his time and when we talk about tennyson's craft he took great take care of skill in perfecting the form and technique if you see the romantic period was about uh, rather than form it was more about ideas why tennyson is much important because queen victoria the victorian period was something about moral values something that should be perfect so it basically focused on the form and the technique so he was he had very much taken care he had the skill of perfecting the form that he has written he has written elegy he has written elic uh, uh, he has written elegy he has written lyric and in this it's it's much much perfect form and techniques that we find it has the mixed sound and sense it has a great musical quality uh, some day when you are sitting just uh, find out any poem by alfred lord tennyson and listen them on youtube you'll find that it has a really nice music and it has aesthetic sense also so there is a much musical quality in that and it was it is very much descriptive his poems are very much descript uh, it's a description of uh, things that he is writing about be it about death be it about love be it about loss or things like that so with this lecture we pay great tribute to lord alfred tennyson thank you for watching this video in the next class we will come with the next poet or a writer or a dramatist of the era victorian era till the time happy reading enjoy Sadhya yaha para